Risk management, we've looked at identifying risks, assessing risks and controlling risks. And I'd like to say it's quite easy to teach. And I can see students, you know, sitting through these lectures and they take the notes and they think they understand risk management. However, it's difficult to do in practice. And it's difficult to assess the probability of the risks. Uh, usually students will identify risks like a uh, supplier delivers late. But then I'll say, well, which supplier? You know, is he a supplier of a component on the critical path or a non-critical item? And how late? Is he two days late, 20 days late? They have different assessments. So apart from not identifying a risk, then identifying a risk that can't be assessed. The bad weather example. You know, do we mean rain? Do we mean high winds? Do we mean frosts? They're different risks. Do we mean high wind for three days, high wind for 12 hours? They have different assessments. So risk can start to become very complicated. I've already suggested that sometimes there's a liability issue involved with risks. We have to have ownership of the risks in our risk log. Uh, and companies are worried about liability. We could spend days and days trying to identify and assess the risks in our project. And sometimes the senior managers um, you know, see the project team meeting, brainstorming the risks, and they say, well, guys, what are you doing? And they say, well, we're trying to identify and assess the risks in our project. And of course, it's not constructive work. It's nothing that can be shown to a customer that the designs have started or the building of this thing has started. So sometimes the senior management don't want to know what we're bad at. They know that their machines are unreliable. They know that their skills are lacking in certain areas because certain staff have left. They know what the risks are, but they don't want to admit it. They can't solve them very quickly. They can't afford a new machine. They can't recruit a new person for three or six months. See, the trouble with looking at risk in great detail is you start to build a risk budget that's you know, as big as the original project budget. You say, this is a £20,000 project, but actually I want to spend £10,000 to get rid of the risks on it. Risk management is the professional thing to do for a professional project manager. So we have to identify what we don't know, otherwise we will be reacting. A project manager is proactive. Risk management is proactive. So it is the professional thing for a project manager to do. Identify the risks, find out what you don't know. Prevent the bad things happening. Try and reduce the impact or the probability of the bad things. Try and encourage the good things to happen that you can capitalize on. And be open and honest about your problems. Now listen, if these are your projects, you don't want to be named as the project manager. In this situation, you know, if you need to lift something to a high level, hire a crane. There are various people in this image who are at great risk. Nobody is wearing a hard hat. There is a risk of people falling off. There's actually one gentleman behind the first forklift truck who's risking being crushed. You cannot allow these things to happen on your project. In this example, you know, building a new house, want to connect it to the telephone network, then use the proper tools. There are actually two people at the top of that ladder. This is risky. Don't allow these things to happen on your project. Now, sometimes you have to look at this image for a while before you realize what is wrong. If your staff need protective clothing, then you need to provide protective clothing for all of your staff. I mean, face masks, breathing apparatus, suits, and there's one of your staff having a good look at what's happening with no protection at all. If something goes wrong and you're the project manager, you are going to be in trouble. Okay, this gentleman, yeah, he's changing a light fitting above a swimming pool on a metal ladder, although it's probably aluminium, with an electric drill. Do you think this is a sensible thing to do? I find this example of the lamppost, I find this really sad because the whole purpose of lampposts is to reduce risks of traffic accidents to make the road safer. 
So some, some, some town council, some organisation has decided it is a good idea to have lampposts, but we won't spend the money on having the proper equipment to service those lampposts. Look, this guy's really sensible. He's identified the risks. He's not got one prop on his vehicle. He has two props. And he's put a brick underneath the rear wheel. He's taken all sensible precautions. Uh, but actually, he's welding near a petrol tank. I can't see where he's taken precautions for that. Take a walk around your factory to identify where things could go wrong. I mean, clearly having some sort of loading bay, uh, which isn't protected when you're moving sensitive items around, is clearly a source for risk in your project. You need to be very careful about what you do. If something bad happens on your project and you're the project manager, you could be held liable. The professional thing to do is be proactive and follow all health and safety requirements to reduce the risks of accidents on your projects.